God's word from the Gospel of John. Chapter 3, beginning with the first verse. Listen for God's word for us today. Now, there was a Pharisee, a man named Nicodemus, who was a member of the Jewish ruling council. He came to Jesus at night and said, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one could perform the signs that you are doing if God were not with him. And Jesus replied, Very truly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. How can someone be born when they are old? Nicodemus asked. Surely they cannot enter a second time into their mother's womb to be born. Jesus answered, Very truly, I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born of water and the Spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the Spirit gives birth to Spirit. You should not be surprised at my saying you must be born again. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. How can this be, Nicodemus asked. You are Israel's teacher, said Jesus, and you do not understand these things? Very truly, I tell you, we speak of what we know, and we testify to what we have seen, but still you do not accept our testimony. I have spoken to you of earthly things, and you do not believe. How then will you believe if I speak of heavenly things? No one has ever gone into heaven except the one who came from heaven, the Son of Man. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up that everyone who believes may have eternal life in him. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. This is the word of God, and it is for you, the people of God. On this second Sunday in Lent, we continue our journey through the wilderness. Last Sunday, we followed Jesus into the desert where he showed us that in the wilderness of struggle and temptation, we can learn to trust more fully in our God. And today, we meet another person in the wilderness, a man named Nicodemus. Wilderness might not be the first word to come to mind when we think of Nicodemus. After all, he is a Pharisee, a prominent religious leader, well-read, articulate about the things of God and of the law. And the Pharisees, they hold quite a bit of power in Jewish society. And none of them are particularly appreciative of the ruckus this teacher named Jesus has been causing. You see, turning water into wine and flipping tables in the temple doesn't exactly give you a good reputation with the religious powers that be. So what in the world about Nicodemus says wilderness? Well, while all those things I just mentioned might be true about him, Nicodemus is also curious. He is curious about Jesus. He's seen the incredible things that he's been doing and he's heard his teaching and for some reason he wants to know more. He's compelled to seek Jesus out, maybe to find answers or proof or maybe just to get closer to this thing that he doesn't understand. But because of what he has seen Jesus do, something in him is no longer content with what he knows about the world and about God. The wilderness has already begun to find him. And so he goes to Jesus and he confesses the only thing that he knows how to confess. And he says, we've all seen the miraculous things that you have done. So I think you must have come from God. 
And being the religious man that he was, I wonder if Nicodemus was expecting Jesus to say, why, yes, actually. And here are the words of the Hebrew prophets that explain my existence and why I am here. You get it, now receive this blessing and go in peace. But Jesus does nothing of the sort. Jesus responds with these crazy words about being born again. Very truly, I tell you that no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. And Nicodemus doesn't get it. He is thoroughly confused. And he thinks that Jesus is talking about literally being born again from his mother's womb. And so Jesus goes on to talk about being born of water and spirit and of the wind blowing wherever it pleases, of heavenly things and eternal life. Nicodemus was seeking answers from Jesus, the man. But instead, he is confronted with the incredible mystery of the living God. He wanted truth, and he gets it. But instead of right answers, the truth is a person. And that person is right in front of him, speaking of things that he just doesn't understand. But still, the Spirit brought him to sit and to learn at this teacher's feet. And he's left with more questions than he brought with him. What does all this mean? And deeper into the wilderness, Nicodemus goes. So here we are arriving at the second gift of the wilderness. It's the first, if the first one was trust, then the second is mystery. We all experience times of life and in faith where what once seems certain becomes questionable. Like Nicodemus, we become dissatisfied with what we thought we knew. Something doesn't fit quite right anymore, and our questions grow deeper. And we have a tendency to look at these wilderness times as negative, right? We fearfully call them doubt. <laughs> like doubt is the opposite of faith. But friends, doubt is not the opposite of faith. Certainty is the opposite of faith. Doubt is born of faith because so much of God is mystery. And sometimes an encounter with the holy reveals to us just how much we do not know. So church, I want to invite you to resist the urge to run from those moments. Let's own up to what we do not know. Let's be honest when we find ourselves in a place where our foundations are shifting. Let's be okay with the questions, and then let's not turn to fear when others in our lives find themselves there. Let's lean in to the mystery And like Nicodemus, let's sit at its feet for a while. Christian writer Debbie Thomas points out, she said, Jesus had no problem leaving Nicodemus confused and muddled. He was in no hurry to get Nicodemus to sign on the dotted line. The spirit blows where it chooses, Jesus said. The spirit cannot be caged or contained, which means that the journey of faith And the workings of salvation cannot be caged. Yes, Lord. (laughs) It means that the journey of faith and the workings of salvation cannot be caged or contained either. When we speak of God's kingdom, we're in a realm of deep mystery. And it's okay to be surprised. It's okay to be stricken. It's okay to take our time. Nicodemus reminds us that perfect understanding and right answers are not requirements to sit at the feet of Jesus. But curiosity might be. 
My friend and favorite preacher, Kate Murphy, said in a sermon once, curiosity might kill the cat, but it also reveals the holy. It calls us deeper into mystery. Sometimes in that wilderness where we are confronted with the mystery of God, we find awe and wonder. And sometimes we find confusion and questions that we don't know what to do with. All of this is sacred. And in all of this, we belong to God, who is both abstract and concrete, who is both incomprehensible and simple, both flesh and bone and mystery. I come across these videos online fairly often where, where people who have been colorblind their entire lives are given a pair of special glasses. Have you seen these? They're amazing. And something about these lenses, about the way that they're made, actually allows people who are colorblind to see in full color for the first time in their lives. It's truly incredible. And I find these videos so moving, I cry every time I watch one of them. Because you get to watch someone's actual view of their life change in an instant. And almost every time the person puts the glasses on, they look up and they immediately begin to cry and they take the glasses off. They are overwhelmed completely and disoriented. It's not only that they're experiencing the beauty of these colors for the first time, but in an instant, they see that the world that they thought they knew, what they had been seeing all along, all those years, might actually be very different. They are confronted all at once with a perspective that they didn't have before they put on those glasses. And eventually, the person they puts the glasses back on, and they begin to really look at the surroundings with new eyes. And joy takes over, and disbelief as they take, put the glasses on and take them off and put them on and take them off. And they realize how much they have yet to really see. I wonder if each time they look at something new with those glasses on, even something that they've seen a thousand times before, I wonder if they are surprised by its beauty and its depth. Over and over again, they have this dual experience of encountering new beauty and of reckoning with the truth and the loss of their old way of seeing. That must be disorienting and life-changing. And so I wonder if that's kind of like what Jesus means when he says we must be born again if we want to see the kingdom of God. We must be willing to be given new lenses, new eyes to see the mystery, which means that we will also be given new eyes to see where we have come from. And maybe we will have one life-altering moment that does this. But more likely, it's a series of moments where we are born again and again and again. Where a new pair of glasses or a new question leads us back to the feet of Jesus who offers us both bread to nourish our bodies and sacred mystery to entice our souls. This encounter with Jesus ends without Nicodemus coming to any major revelation. He doesn't drop everything and follow as others have, but apparently that sacred, holy, wild wilderness follows him. Because we do see Nicodemus two more times in the Gospel of John. We see a man who is in the process of being born again. Because the next time we see him, he's tentatively defending Jesus before the other Pharisees as they're calling for him to be arrested. 
And he's trying to save him, to keep the religious authorities from killing him. And then the final time that we see Nicodemus, he is one of the two men who carried Jesus' body from the cross to the tomb. He buries him, mourning him, offering him the dignity denied him in death. So somewhere along the way, Nicodemus found himself in the wilderness with Jesus. And Jesus never offered him easy answers. He never offered him a quick way out. It was always an invitation to follow him deeper into the mystery. The mystery of shifting foundations. The mystery of fear. The mystery of death, the mystery of being reborn. And if the death of Jesus was so significant for Nicodemus that he chose to bury him himself, imagine the power for him of the mystery of Jesus' resurrection. So I want to close with reading to you once again the final two verses of our gospel reading today. And the first is John 3.16. It's a verse that Martin Luther called the heart of the Bible, the gospel in miniature. We see it on bumper stickers and painted onto the cheeks of football players and cheerleaders. It's the first Bible verse that many of us memorized as children. But sadly, it's also a verse that Christians hurl at others like a weapon. Here's the simple truth. Believe it or else. This is all you need to know. But in our quest to make the gospel simple and palatable, we do ourselves and others a disservice because we neglect the verse that follows. And that's the verse that gives comfort to those journeying in the wilderness, that makes space for the questions and reveals the mystery. The truth of John 3, 16 is made more powerful when received with the promise of John 3, 17. So Jesus is speaking to Nicodemus, who has sought him out, who is utterly confused by his face-to-face encounter with the mystery of God in flesh. And Jesus says these words. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. God's promise and intent for us is salvation, not even in the questions and uncertainty of the wilderness, that promise is for us. For God so loved the world, for God so loved Nicodemus, for God so loves you, for God so loves us. Alleluia. Amen.